the man's still blind. Then he go tell him to go wash. How was the man supposed to find the pool and he ain't never seen? That's what your unbelieving people would question you with. What are we going to do? Get the hammer and horn? Well, yeah, you're right. That don't make sense. He told him to go wash. The Bible contradicts itself right there. Huh? No! The Bible only majors in majors, never in minors. Evidently, the man being blind couldn't get himself to the pool. He never saw the pool. Couldn't have find it if he did know where it was because he was blind. So obviously, the man was not there alone. Jesus could have picked anybody in the crowd and said, take his hand, walk him to the pool. But the Bible doesn't give you the fine points of detail about how he got there. Why not? Because it's not important how he got there. What's important, y'all, is that he got there. What's important is that he heard the Lord, gave him a commandment, he obeyed, and got the blessing. Hello, somebody. Go wash. It makes no difference how he got there. Somebody obviously took him there. But the Bible's not going to give you all the fine points how he got there. It's obvious he got there because the Bible tells you he got there. And after he got there, he washed the spit and the mud out of his face. And he came back seeing. Mm. So what's the point here? The point is, sometimes God's going to tell you whatever healing you need, whether it's physical, spiritual, emotional, Financial, whatever it is, you got to go outside of your comfort zone. You got to go outside of the system to get from God what God has for you. We live in a system in America that right now is 100% anti God, 100% pro Satan. Every statute from the feds to the local government that comes down is anti-God for the most part. Not all of them, but of too many of them. We all saw what the Supreme Court came up with just last week. Called that which was constitutional, unconstitutional. And then called that which was wicked and perverted and crazy constitutional. And it goes on and on. I told somebody just this morning, all you young people especially were born when Roe versus Wade, which legalized murder, you all were born way after that. So in your minds, well, it's legal. The Supreme Court said so, that a woman can kill a child, so it must be right. No, it's, can, it's legal, but it's still evil. Everything legal is not moral. And everything legal sure is not righteous. I told somebody a story that happened to me just two weeks ago at our condominium. Every condo has a, a carport. The, the birds flew straight to our carport, built a nest. I had no problem with that. I knew why the birds came to our, our carport, because the devil said, get that reverend. He's getting on my nerves. <laughs> built a nest right over our car and had diarrhea. <laughs> this is, yeah, I'm not just telling you this. And like 50 birds had diarrhea over our car and in the carport. Everywhere. Everybody else's carport, they didn't touch. They came right to Mrs. and Reverend Craft's carport. I looked, I said, hmm. That's worse than spit and mud. <laughs> I went to the maintenance department, told them about it. She said, what happened, Reverend? I said, the birds came and pooped, 50 of them, and built a nest. It's a mess. I need a power wash up in there. She said, are the birds still there? I said, yeah. She looked at me and said, I'm sorry, Reverend. I said, what do you mean? She said, ah, we can't go down power wash your carport now until those birds fly out the nest. I said, what are you talking about? She said, don't you know it's against the law to do that? I said, what? 
She said, yeah, here's the law against that. You can't disturb those words. I said, wait a minute, let me make sure I'm not getting this twisted. You're telling me that I'm human. I'm paying you a condo fee every month to park my car without it getting full of bird poop. You're telling me the birds who don't pay the mortgage <laughs> don't pay the condo fee. Big as his complex is, they can poop all over my spot and my car, and I can't move them because of some stupid law. She says, that's right, I didn't write the law. I said, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, to me, it's kind of crazy that America has come this far that I'll go to jail if I move a bird's nest, but yet a woman can kill her own child in her own belly. And that's not a problem. Now, if anybody don't see something wrong with that picture, I don't know. Supreme Court says, leave the birds alone! Kill your baby, because it's unplanned and unwanted. What? Unplanned and unwanted? Last time I checked, sex makes babies. So when I plan to have sex, there's a 50% chance that I plan I'm going to have a baby. Hello, somebody. The only difference is, will it be a live baby or a dead one? You young people need to stand in the face of people who tell you all this nonsense about choice and all this foolishness and ask them about that one. And then ask them this question. Here's the bomb, the bombshell. Say, are you alive or dead? And they say, of course I'm alive. Don't you see this pro-abortion sign, woman's right? And then ask them, did your mama, was she pro-life or pro-abortion? I don't know what she was. Maybe you don't know what she was. If she was pro-abortion, you wouldn't be here carrying the sign. You'd be dead. So whether she knew she was pro-life or not, she was. You're the proof. No, all that mess is, is a way to sin without the consequence. But we're blind from birth because we believe the devil's lies. It's a choice that a woman has. No, it's not. It's a sin that she committed that she needs to repent of. And the sin is called murder. That's the truth. And don't get me on this other nonsense about two men marrying. Ain't even no such thing as that. Again, you can ask them folks. Last time I checked, it took a man and a woman to make you. End of discussion. See, this stuff is so ridiculous, but people believe it. You know why they believe it? Because the devil put in a man years ago named Karl Marx. He said this, tell a big lie long enough and loud enough and after a while everybody will believe it. We're blind from birth. The man was born blind. He came back. See, we got 10 more minutes. See, there's so many biblical principles that you can get out of the Bible. that we really need to get in our Bibles, y'all, adults and young people. Amen. I'm going to wrap it up here because we have a really special guest that I want to meet that's going to be coming next session from Sudan to talk about this Islamic stuff. And I was just, I wasn't in Sudan. Either time I went to South Africa last October after we left Camp Constitution, after I left Camp Constitution, rather. That I went to Israel last month. So I see a lot of different cultures and I travel a lot because I want to see what God's doing around the world. 
what I encourage every one of us in the house, adults and young, young people, ask God to give you a spirit of boldness. Be like the man in this text. When the religious Pharisees, the hypocrites, say to the man, Give God the glory, not this Jesus. We know he's a sinner. What the man say? The man said, I don't know about that. He's a sinner now. And all I know is I was blind and now I see. Uh-huh. That's the end of the story. You can call him. I'm not going to debate with you about if Jesus sinned. No, he never sinned. He's God. I'm not going to debate with you, the man said, about all this, that, and the other. All I know, sir, is I was blind. And now I see. That wasn't good enough for him. Then he went to his mama, his parents. Says, is this your son? Yeah, that's our son. Was he born blind? Yeah, he was born blind. Well, then how can he see? We don't know he's of age. You ask him. <laughs> hey, you ask him for yourself. You young people, us older people, we're of age. Don't let the devil put mud and spit in your eyes in the form of political correctness. I'll say that one more time. Don't let the world system, don't let the world, the flesh, and the devil put mud and spit in your eyes and call it political correctness. Because if you permit that, you're going to be spiritually blind. And you're not going to be able to discern truth from fantasy. You're not going to be able to discern right from wrong. You're not going to have any spiritual thermometer or thermostat to judge good from evil. You will go along with whatever Satan tells you through pop the political powers that be. Or any unbelieving person that wants to tell you a big lie in order to control you. But Reverend Kraft, as I close, is here to tell you this. B-I-B-L-E. Basic. Say basic. basic. I. Instructions. instructions. B. Before. before. L. Leaving. leaving. E. Earth. Earth. Young people and adults, don't get caught up in dead, dry religion. Get a true relationship with Christ. Shake yourself loose. Get into the word of God. This is the truth. This book tells you how life really works. Not CNN, not Fox, not NBC, not ABC, not Wall Street Journal, not New York Times, not any of that nonsense. They're all human sinful beings that have an agenda. And their agenda did not come down from heaven. It came out of the pits of hell. Reverend, how can you say that? How do you know that? Simple. Because if they're saying everything that contradicts what God says about any issue, if God says up is up and they tell you no, up is down, if they tell you right is wrong and wrong is right, and God says no, right is right and wrong is wrong, if they tell you heterosexuality is, is bigoted and homosexuality is, is normal, and God says no, homosexuality is an abomination and heterosexuality